Okay, so now we're, uh, we're back with Mike Martin and Cassio to talk more about the uh, Selviano Grand Hybrid's uh, tonal capabilities. And uh, Mike, take it away. Tell us uh, about the presets, about how people can shape the sounds, etc. Absolutely. So uh, first and foremost, right on the front of the instrument, this is where you can select your three different piano tones, the Berlin Grand, the Hamburg, and the Vienna. So, uh, you know, very easy, one button press away. Um, if you press them again, you'll get a variation on that sound. So there's a sort of bright and mellow versions of each of those presets as well. Uh, but again, one button press away. Now, if you want to get in and, and contour and adjust the sounds, there's a lot of control uh, to adjust things and the engine's quite powerful. If you go into settings here, uh, the second item on the list is acoustic simulator. And that's the real power of our um, AIR Grand Sound Source. That's the engine or our chip that, that drives this instrument. So um, starting at the top uh, we have something called hammer response. That's a, actually a time element between the connection of the action and the engine itself. Uh, a piano, as you know, the sound isn't like a light switch, it's not instantaneous. So, you, you know, we've, we've done a lot of research to, to make sure, you know, the default is natural. Um, but you could actually make the action feel or respond a little bit quicker or a little bit slower depending on the, you know, what you're used to playing. There's some adjustment there. Uh, lid simulator, um, as, as it uh, sounds, you know, you can get in here and contour the, the, the lid position of the instrument accordingly. And we've gone to great lengths to model that as well. Uh, damper resonance. So when you're using your damper pedal, um, 10 levels of, of resonance that would occur when you're using that. Sym Sym yeah, symp well, actually, sympathetic is, is string resonance. Mm. So that's what's happening between the keys as opposed to uh, damper resonance is only when the pedal is, is in use. So two different things. One is all the strings resonating together, and with string resonance, that's how the individual strings inter, um, interact sympathetically. Yep. Um, damper noise, of course, you can get in here, and you know this is just the sound of the yep. the felt coming off uh, coming off the uh, strings. Um, and then you get into things like, uh, and this is unique to the GP500 from here down, uh, where you have some control of some other elements. Um, open string resonance, so that's you know your your strings from the the top octave and a half or so yeah. of the instrument that are ringing freely and, and resonating, you know, while you're playing the instrument, and that's a you know there's some upper harmonics and uh, sounds that are happening there, along with the aliquot resonance. Um, some piano makers really exaggerate again the, again those upper harmonics that are occurring between the um, uh, basically the the tuning peg and and, and the fret so um, those are tuned in a lot of instruments and then we got you know mechanical noises of the pedal action the key on and key off action noises so those last uh, four items starting with open open string resonance down are unique to this instrument um, the GP 500 the GP 300 is missing those controls Another cool thing is once you've contoured and adjusted the instrument however you like, and that would include other things like the reverb and other effects simulation that we do, uh, we'll just take a quick look at that. Um, under effects, you can choose things like your player position or listener's position, some, other, some distance factors that you can control here, as well as some venues that you can choose. Uh, once you've set all of these things, you can store them as a scene. And that's a, that's a snapshot of everything that's going on in the instrument. Um, and you can recall that as, as one button press. In fact, built into the instrument, um, the scenes, there are uh, 14 different scenes for a variety of type of musical styles, including um, composers. Uh, so it's a suggestion of, you know, hey, this piano, this venue, these settings might be appropriate for, for that type of music. So it's a real fun way to, to get you there. Also, I see uh, provisions for recording and playback. Yes. So um, it will do, you know, standard MIDI recording as well as audio recording. So if we were to hit uh, the record button you see up here on the top, it says record wait. It's, it's armed. It's ready to go. So if I touch the pedal, if I play a key, it's recording a 16-bit uh, WAV file to a USB drive that we have plugged in on the other end of the instrument. Uh, it can also record MIDI as well. So it's it's... Uh, ready to do that, any, any moment of inspiration can be captured uh, very easily. A couple other unique things, um, let me take it out of record. Um, we've got something called Concert Play, which is a wonderful um, 
audio accompaniment of a symphony orchestra. So uh, if you want to practice your piano concerto, there's, there's a variety of pieces built into the product. We even have the ability to slow them down to about 80% for practice. Um, so a great way to literally play a grand piano along with an orchestra. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a fun experience. Do you have the setting, remember the video with the cat and the symphony orchestra? Do you have <laughs> that piece? Because that, that would be the only classical piece that I would feel I could attempt mm, to. Unfortunately, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> unfortunately, no. So, uh, of course, uh, we can also do layers. Uh, there are sounds in this instrument besides the pianos. Yeah, I saw uh, that in the demo that there's, that there's some, some strings. Yeah, there's, there's and... uh, new stereo strings. Uh, electric pianos, whirlers, harpsichords, and more. And that's another differentiating factor between the, the, the GP300 and the GP500 is the 500 has many other sounds, m many more than the 300. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, you know, metronome, split and layer, um, I think we've just about covered it. But the point here is to be easy and accessible, and you can, you can even lock this control panel. So in a performance situation, uh, you, you, you know, uh, if you're playing the Vienna and you look reached for the extra keys that aren't there, yeah. um, you wouldn't accidentally change anything. Also, for a <laughs> university setting, and if people want to kind of lock it into the settings that they Correct. prefer. Correct. Yeah. So you can completely lock the front panel. It's great. Great. We're going to uh, reset, talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the speaker system and how people can uh, uh, feel even more close to the instrument. Great.